Shonda Daniels. Welcome to the podcast. Hello there, my friend. Good to see you in person. It is so amazing to see you right now, to be here. It's funny because, you know, we did a podcast. You were one of our first guests on, we were just doing audio. And then we started following each other on Instagram. And it's this thing where through social media, you feel like you know someone really well. Yes, yes. So then when you see them in real life, you're like, oh, that's my friend. Yes, yes, yes. So excited to be in real life with you. Me too. Just like, you're so beautiful in person. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I haven't been tricking everyone with my filters. (laughs) (laughs) No, not at all. This is real people. Oh Um, my goodness. I'm I'm so excited to to dive in, but for everyone who's listening um, and watching, um, tell us about you and your business. You're based in Oakland. You are a designer and event planner, but you do a little bit of everything. Yes, yes. Planning, design. I absolutely love wedding weekends, um, nonprofit events, all kind of milestone celebrations. Anything that, anything that we can celebrate, I love planning. And you've been doing this for two decades. Oh man, yes. A very long time. Very, very long time. So your first event then, almost 20 years ago. Yes. Take us back. Oh, my God. (laughs) Okay. Very first event was, it was an Indian wedding. Very first one, right after getting certified, put a $500 ad in the newspaper and was so excited when I signed that contract. And super excited that they signed it so quickly. Little did I know that it wasn't a common thing that it goes that quick. Mm-hmm. I just wasn't charging enough. <laughs> and so they were I was like, sign like, me up. This is it. They were like, sign. I'm like, oh my God, is this is this how it how it happens? This was super fast. 500 people. The number five is the, the theme here. 500 people. I at the end of the night, feet barking. In the car thinking, okay, I need a new business plan. I need how many people are coming with me. That first one set the tone for how I decided to move forward. It was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. Well, an Indian wedding for your first wedding is a little ambitious because (laughs) just the sheer number of guests. And I imagine they had a number of events. Was it just one day or was it? I did the one day. And you know, I remember this always. I did the one day. It was at the Richmond Auditorium. So it was at an auditorium. So you know how many people there were. And it was just one caterer. I think it was their first time too. Oh, wow. So we were both, my feet were burning. I am not joking. And after that, like I said, went to the car crying. Oh my God, what did I do? Laid out how I wanted my weddings to move forward, the teams that I wanted on my day, on the day. And that was it. After that, I never did it alone again. And now fast forward, the events that you do are at a luxury level, at a minimum, I would say. Yes. Big scale, destination, just really, I would say... We don't have magazines anymore, really. But yes. like very yes. magazine, picturesque, so aesthetic. Thank you. It's the truth. Thank you. But walk us through that journey. How did you get from that 500 oh, person wow. auditorium to where that is now? I mean, I will tell you that it was hard work. It was a lot of tears. It was a lot of believing in myself and trial and error. Like just not having, because at one point during that whole journey, I didn't have anyone to tell me, Shonda, this is what you should do. This is how you should market. This is all those things that will lead you to here. There were so many times where it was just, okay, let me just try it and see if this works. This works. Okay, cool. I'm adding this in and then moving forward. I always wanted to outdo myself Mm. and wanted to get better with the weddings that I was doing. But then not understanding like attracts like, not understanding all of these things that I know now to where it was just like, this did not take overnight. The whole 25 plus has been a learning journey. And I still feel like there is more for me to learn to get to my next level. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's totally not um, an overnight situation. 
at all. And it's not easy to attract high paying clients. However, it's not just high paying clients. You have a very specific clientele. I'd love for you to talk about who you service and how that how you created that momentum. I heard you say like attracts like. It, yes, yes. Okay, so when I first started AMA, I really, my main focus was for LGBT, LGBTQ plus couples because at that time, no one in the industry wanted to do weddings. Uh, they they were called commitment ceremonies at the time. No one Is wanted that not to do- crazy that not even 20 years ago- there were not even weddings. Okay. It wasn't even a it, wedding. It was a commitment ceremony or celebration. Yes. Yes. But even today, there are still people who are like, no, I don't, you know, I don't want to do it. I don't believe in it. What have you. Mm. However, it's better than it was when I first started. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, I was like, okay, I want to be the person because I remember what it was like to come out. So I don't want my couples to feel like they have to come out and expose themselves to someone potentially saying no mm -hmm. when they're supposed to be excited and having mm -hmm. fun and things like that. So over time, it grew from LGBTQ plus couples. It, then it transitioned to People being attracted to me because they saw the diversity. Mm -hmm. They saw how I was intentional to um, show that I was inclusive. Mm -hmm. Because a big thing for me has always been to, on my websites, on Instagram, whatever, is to show the diversity. Mm -hmm. You know what the saying, pictures worth a thousand words, what have you. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make sure that when people came to my website or any part that's connected to me, that they can see themselves. Mm. That was my main thing. Yeah, I can design. I can plan, whatever. That's a given. But I wanted people to connect to me because they saw that I was intentional to showing themselves on my, on my site. Mm. That's beautiful. The types of couples that you, or the types of weddings that you've done as a result mm -hmm. have taken you all over the world. All over, all over. And I love the fact how, I, I want to say about 20, in 2019 is when I decided to branch out and say like, okay, I've done all of these types. I've I've taken people's vision and I've made them into what whatever they wanted them to be. With a mini, a Monique Affair. A Monique Affair, yep. And then, but then in 2019, I said, okay, a Monique Affair, here, let's let's make you, let's groom you, let's do all of this so you can fly on your own. But then now I want people to see my design and mm -hmm. say, Shonda, I love how you design. Mm -hmm. Yes, here's some of the things that I like, but I like your style. Mm -hmm. And I want to celebrate my guests over the whole entire weekend. Can mm -hmm. you do this? Sure, I got you. Mm -hmm. And so that's what made me transition over to working in doing wedding weekends, being more um, in tune with the design and things like that. So you act almost as the creative director for the entire wedding weekend. For so coming weekend. in and designing the entire experience, yes. which is very different than coming in and executing on someone else's vision yes. or doing just the logistics or, yes. you know, the day, the day to day of, of the event. Yes. But I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to feel like I'm leaving the core base. So that's why AMA is still there and I have my planners to do all that. But then for me, I'm like, this is, this is where I'm ready to go. So how many events are you doing a year? For me is four. That's it. I just four. Four is it. Because I still have to manage and oversee AMA. Those so four I events feel like, though. Yeah. Those four. <laughs> yeah. Those four turn. People are like four. But four in a wedding weekend is three to four events. Mm -hmm. And so for me to be very intentional on how they look and all of that, because this is a funny part too. When you're published, every single couple that comes to you, they want to be published too. So they mm -hmm. want the same amount of details. That's the reality right? that we live in right now. So every single detail has to be up to standard or up to publication level. So yeah, it's very detailed. If you could just design anything mm -hmm. you want, right? Like you do incredibly beautiful stuff. What is a budget that you need? 
or a person would need yes. to make something epic. And I know that we're talking about a very small percentage of people who have access to you. Yes. Oh, yes. What is a budget looking like? If a if a couple can comfortably, I would say comfortably afford 800,000, I hope I'm saying that right, 800,000, if they can afford that comfortably, then I we're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> so basically almost a million dollars if you're comfortable. We are good. Yes. <laughs> what goes into a million dollar wedding? I'm glad you asked that. Because people don't think about like the production costs. Like, yes, because you don't necessarily have to have, I hope I'm not going to shoot myself in the foot when I say this. You don't have to have like over the top florals or anything like that, but just the core, like the production time for each creative so they can be great. So not skimping on having two days if, if the venue allows or not, you know, not trying to cut corners to do things like giving people the opportunity and the space they need and the budget they need to be great and produce something amazing for you. So that's why I said, if you have that amount and you can, you have that comfortably to start, then you're all good. Okay. <laughs> I, I need to ask questions about an $800,000 And that's a weekend. That is a comfortable week wedding yes. budget. Um, are we buying out uh, a hotel venue? Like, are, is it a full okay. buyout? So that's like, we're paying for your wedding party to stay at whatever location. Okay. Right? Accommodations. Included. Accommodations. You're paying for some of your guests. You're paying for transportation the whole entire weekend. Okay, you're so paying you're for, flying people in with that budget. You're not necessarily flying, <laughs> but you're they're staying. They're okay. at their whole their accommodations. Okay. They're um because if you think about it, you want to make sure that your guests, they don't have to go in their pocket for anything. Mm. Their ticket to get there, yes. But everything else, while they are at your wedding weekend, you are taking care of it. So it's a vacation experience for yes. your 150 plus guests. Yes. It's okay, a, now I'm whole, starting to okay, add the numbers up sense? here. Because okay. yeah. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking, girl, what? <laughs> no, but it's, I, I, I want to dive into it because I want to, Really understand it because okay, when you see these incredible weddings mm -hmm. and nobody ever puts a price tag online, so you have no idea how much things cost. Yes. Right? So yes. that's a big problem in the wedding industry is Very. you see these incredible photo shoots, you see these incredible pub um, published weddings, yes, and no one has any sense of how much it cost to, to do that. Yes. And then you hear budgets like a million dollars. And that's low. I'm just telling you right here and right now. A million now, is low. That is low. I'm I'm saying basic. <laughs> I'm saying basic. Yes. A basic wedding for a million dollars. Yes. When you look at, like you said, when you look at, if you could break down, you know what? We need to do another one and just take a wedding and break it down. Oh, like yeah. Just every, pull it up and break it down. I mean, it, I it's important. So, so let's, very, just, let's just talk about add a million dollars. Okay. You have 150, let's just say 100 guests to make it even. Okay. Okay. You have 100 guests. So they're spending, what is that, 10,000 per guest? The whole entire weekend. So that's the welcome party, mm -hmm. whatever kind of welcome experience you're going to give them. That's the wedding day. That's the following day. That's the transportation on each of those days. It's the right? accommodation for three days. For your wedding party. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wedding party and then transportation for each three of those days. Right. Because think about it. Transportation on one day for 150 guests could be anywhere like about $20,000. Right. Mm -hmm. So if your timing's three. Okay. That's 60 right there. So <laughs> Got it. What do we pay? <laughs> and then and then the actual restaurant mm -hmm. for a hundred people, technically that's like a a, a wedding, right? Mm -hmm. A wedding reception mm -hmm. for food and beverage for all three days because of brunch, all of that decor, mm -hmm. because a lot of times you're not gonna want to take your florals from one event and stretch them the whole entire weekend. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have big you have to have, floral. Of course you have to have you're spending you a million to. dollars, you better have fresh florals you every day. <laughs> There's, I'm like shocked by there's this. No <laughs> but let me ask you a question. How much are we paying for oh my goodness. a photographer on a million dollar wedding? Because you're going to have that photographer for all three days, probably four days. 
Okay, how many so photo shoots I, are we having? So here we go. So I feel like photographers, that's the one thing that I feel like they are just now starting to put into their collections is how much to charge for each day mm -hmm. because you can have a photographer that charges 30000 for one day. But mm -hmm. when you think about the whole weekend, right now, I feel like it's more customized, mm -hmm. right? But I feel like that's something. And for cinema artists, I feel like those two, they need to start putting together collections. Like a package, that, you mean? Yeah. Putting together a collection that will cover the three days because that's one of those hidden costs mm -hmm. that, I mean, of course, we as wedding planners, we know to add that in. Mm -hmm. But it's more now it's more of having that conversation with that creative to say, like, OK, here's this wedding three days. Let's put something together. Mm -hmm. I feel like they should have something together already. Mm -hmm. You said 30,000. So that is about the average. Are you saying that's the average that your photographers that shoot that your events? Is for my events, I have partnerships. Mm -hmm. So those are special prices for me. Mm -hmm. But the like the most high end photographers that I know, 30,000 mm -hmm. big time. I want to yeah. come uh, yeah. to one of the next weddings that you're producing <laughs> please, so I could just be a come. fake guest. No, yeah. It's amazing. I mean, this is this I is mean, a production. This is like the Oscars of weddings. It is. But you know what? And it, like you said before, the big thing that I feel like we need to start doing in this industry is being more, I don't even want to say transparent. I just want to say like, we need to start explaining. Educating. We need to start educating because when it comes to wedding planners, we are the ones that have to break it down for people because couples are looking at Oh, I saw this average that said 50,000 or 30,000. And so it's it's up to the wedding planner to say like, okay, what what is your vision? Mm -hmm. What is your vision? And now let's talk about realistically. Let's talk about the base of what you can get because at AMA we tell people you have to at least at AMA, you have to at least have 75 for mm -hmm. one day at least. Mm -hmm. And that's without knowing style, without knowing any of those things. So it's really about, I feel, couples going to a wedding planner and having some real conversations. But then, like you said, too, for the photo shoots, for for the weddings that people publish, giving like an estimate, mm -hmm. giving like people a range. People get so triggered, though. So a range. On Loverly's Reels, we started putting up real budgets. I that, think I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. And people were submitting it, right? They were yes. submitting, yes. hey, this is what I spent on my bridal shower. This is what I spent on my bachelorette. This was a real wedding in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And it was submitted by either the, the bride or the couple. I'll say the couple submitted it or the planner, which maybe wasn't a full-blown planner, but a day of planner. Okay. And the vast majority of the Loverly audience is that do-it-yourself bride, right? The 70% mm -hmm. that- mm -hmm. Don't have the big budgets. Now, okay. we love to look at and celebrate these amazing big weddings because yeah. you can get inspiration, you can get ideas, right? They they spark joy, for, right. for lack of a better word. So we started, we shared a couple of these real budgets. And when I say the comments went off, people were like, what the well, heck? This is not true. And the point is there are vendors at every single price point. Sometimes people are really good at taking photos just to show the highlight reel and you don't mm -hmm. see how, mm -hmm. you know, all the in-between went. I don't know, but it was it was the most controversial thing. So we 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 showed some budget stuff. I think we need to break down some like luxury so people can see the 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 the, the delta, right, yeah. between the two. Yeah, and you know, I've seen that too and I've seen where people have these really colorful comments. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, if you have, if you can afford to do it, do it. Mm -hmm. If you can't afford, girl, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't try to shame anyone mm -hmm. for spending what they want. Mm -hmm. Don't be in their wallets. Like mm -hmm. let them do their thing mm -hmm. and you do what you feel comfortable with. Well, I think people also, when they have the big budgets, there's almost like they get embarrassed or there's a little bit of not wanting to share how much they spent, which they spent what they spent. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of why the luxury big budget weddings don't get broken down because people 
maybe the couple doesn't want to say, hey, yeah, we, we threw a million dollars at this special day. Mm, that's a good, that's a valid point. But I wonder if there's a way we can share them without showing the couple. Yeah, for sure. And just talking to the creatives. Mm -hmm. Because I feel, like you said, I feel like people need to see on each level, like what it's like. So at a million dollar event, are you having like celebrity performers come in? Not the ones I've had so far. I have something up my sleeve that if I find the right couple that I want to do. Okay. But not celebrity entertainment yet. Because... We've seen some of these weddings where like Michael Buble or John Legend comes and performs and they're charging what, like a quarter million dollars? Well, so to that's perform? why I said the million is like, to me, that's entry level. What I'm saying is entry level. There are people, there are planners who I remember there's planners who spend like that is their floral budget. A million is their floral budget. So what I'm saying is still a low number. I, 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 <laughs> and, it's a house. And again, it's two houses. It is. And again, it's just about, I don't know. I feel like it's a mix of. Where does it all go? Where does it all go? If you had to bulk out the expenses, normally the venue takes a bulk of the, of mm -hmm. the budget, right? Accommodations we spoke about because you're doing multiple days, right? Mm -hmm. So you have multiple venues, you know, photography, call it 30 per event. Maybe there's a package that gets done there. Is the bride potentially wearing a $50,000 dress? I feel like a bulk of it goes to the venue because remember how I said when you have that kind of production, you're looking at pre-production days. You're looking at a post-production day. Mm -hmm. And though, like mm -hmm. literally that goes into it. And then also, did I say food and beverage for all those three days mm -hmm. too? Mm -hmm. So it all, those are the two things, the they things that up. are, the things that are guests are individual, like guests per person. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that totally eat it up because your guest count is your, your driver there. Mm -hmm. So it's like a regular wedding budget, just scaled up. Yeah, and, it's, <laughs> and it really depends on who you are as a couple. Like if food is your number number one top priority, you're going to pick a caterer who is top of the line mm -hmm. and that top of the line is going to come with the cost, mm -hmm. right? So it really depends on who the couple is. And I feel like there's a lot, there's a lot because we are on social media, we are showing our weddings, our weddings are getting published where I feel a small percentage is about wanting to show off for their friends mm -hmm. or wanting to do things way more different than their friends. And that can drive it up too. So if you have couples who are like, if you're focused on what your love story is and what's important to you and kind of stay away from everything else, you can, and be realistic, you can have, Everybody can have the wedding of their dreams, mm. but you have to ma match those expectations with what you can manage mm -hmm. and feel comfortable with. Sean, I'm going to ask you another question. Uh oh, <laughs> I'm scared. I'm literally so scared. Who, don't be scared. Oh my God. Who, who's paying for these million dollar <laughs> weddings? Is it the couple <laughs> or the parents or a combination? Okay. So let me think. So couples. Okay. Couples. And, and they're well-established couples. They're, they're, Yeah. Because I was going to ask if someone's inquiring on your website, mm -hmm. like, do you have anywhere on your website that says, hey, fine print? My minimum is do, X to come in. I believe I we have that on a Monique Affair, mm -hmm. but we don't have it. I don't have it on Shonda Daniels Planning and Design because I want to hear because it's more that's more customized. I really want to hear what they envision mm -hmm. first, because a lot of people, because I've been in it for a long time, they'll still come to me and say and and want to know if I if I will just plan their wedding day itself. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm like, OK, let me just hear what you're let me let's talk about it. And then if it's not a good fit for Shonda Daniels, it can be a good fit for AMA. OK, but yeah. I'm, I'm going to move on from these million dollar okay, weddings. You know, making I'm, me nervous. No, because I'm so fascinated by it. And <laughs> uh, I feel like we're going to have to do a full breakdown. We'll have to after the oh, fact, yeah. like. If you can share blind of like the couple's names, I want to okay. see. I think it'd be so interesting to kind of show where it all goes. Yeah. But um, moving on. Okay. <laughs> so you really 
built your business and your name early on on servicing the underserved, yes. right? Before it was cool to yes. be inclusive, to focus on, you know, LGBTQ couples, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to kind of hear about, for someone who knows nothing about that journey for those couples, what are some of the things that you did, right, to make it easier for these couples? What are, mm-hmm. what are the kind of the intentional things that you did to to service them in a way that no one else was? Because that's part of how you really grew your business. Mm-hmm. So what I did is I made sure first I went out and found all the creatives who were who had the same values as I did. The ones who believed in it, not just wanting to do it for money, Mm -hmm. because I I steered away from those. I wanted people who truly believed that LGBTQ couples deserve to be married. So that was my first thing. And then the second thing, this is going to sound so elementary, but I just listened. I just listened and I let them know that I cared for them, that I wanted to celebrate them, that I'm not here to judge them. Hell, I'm part of the community myself. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I wanted people, whoever sat across the table from me, whatever, I wanted them to feel that I genuinely cared for their day. And that was it. And just walk them through like, instead of saying traditional, what's traditional, what's, no, just tell me, how do you, tell me about you. Tell me about your story. How did y'all meet? Like, Mm -hmm. what makes you happy? What makes y'all happy as a couple? What do you want? How do you want this day to come across? And I just listened. That's it. And it wasn't about the money. It wasn't about any of those things. I wanted them to know that they were safe with me. Listening is such an important thing in any business that you're doing. But I feel like as a planner, the listening, it's almost like you become partly like a therapist of you do. figuring out how to navigate family dynamics, how to navigate budgets, how to navigate, you know, wants, needs, and desires. Yes. Because couples are going through, they're going through a literal um, therapy session through the wedding planning. You're talking about budgeting. You're talking about family, family dynamics, all of that. And especially in, in planning LGBTQ plus couples weddings, just the sheer idea of I've had, I've cried with my clients. I have literally sat up and bawled because people didn't know if their parents would show up. Mm. People wouldn't know. They didn't know if they should kiss, if they should have their first kiss, because a lot of their family members have never seen them kiss before. Mm. People have never been to an LGBTQ plus wedding. I'm like, okay, uh, what's the difference? Mm. A wedding is a wedding. Like, Mm. what's the difference but all of that whole experience like man it's deep it's really deep it's interesting because on loverly one of our most trafficked articles we've written is gender inclusive wedding terms and it's been something that has surged just in the last like four or five years Mm -hmm. And I find it to be not that all of a sudden, you know, there's more gay couples getting married, Mm -hmm. but that the general public is now becoming conscious and aware. Yes, that's it. That you want to be inclusive, not just of, you know, if it's you, but for your wedding guests as well. Yes. Um, Yes. So I'd love to kind of hear kind of your point of view on like designing you know, are you working with couples to design their their ceremonies or their things in a way? How do you navigate kind of like that part of the the process? Well, that part of the process is pretty much like with the officiant and things like that. Like sometimes people will, they will want to, well, let me start over. So we make sure that we find an officiant that is, a lot of people say we want someone that's Mm non-denominational. We want And then we'll find someone for that. Mm -hmm. And they'll just talk them through crafting the type of ceremony that they want. Mm -hmm. Some people are like, nothing religious, nothing. And and most people are like, we just want it under 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
plain and simple, just basic. And so we just match them with that creative and we have the creative walk them through that journey Mm -hmm. of creating their ceremonies. It's interesting because you said that wedding planning kind of is that therapy, right? They're talking about budgets. They're talking about family. Yes. And unless you are getting married through some type of religious organization, whether it's through a church or through a temple, there's really not any kind of premarital counseling yes. that comes up to discuss these these topics. And I wonder if it's, as you mentioned, a little bit more heightened with some of these couples because of some rough family dynamics or just some, you know, I don't know. I'm curious. Well, you know, I, there are creatives that offer um, premarital counseling. And so, and you don't have to be connected to a church or anything. I always, it's on our, our, it's in my conversation with my couples to go and talk to someone. Mm -hmm. So I always encourage people to do that regardless, because I feel like weddings, a wedding or a marriage Mm -hmm. is something that you need to be guided through. Mm. You need to be guided through the whole entire time. Right. It's not just, oh, we're let's just have a pre something because we're getting married. It needs to be a check in Mm -hmm. after you're married. It needs to be however you uh, however you're moving in your relationship. It should be check ins. So I always advise people to do it. If you don't mind, I would love to ask you about Mm -hmm. your relationship and your wedding. Okay, (laughs) because you got married how long ago? I got married in 2011. Okay, and that was it. Around the time that you had just started your business? Uh, no, it was, I had been in business for a minute, for okay. a minute. Oh yeah, 20 but years, it was, I'm doing my math wrong. It's okay, it's all right, <laughs> it's all right. Um, but yeah, 2011. So how, how was it planning your own wedding, <laughs> being someone in the industry? What was that like? It was good. <laughs> Did you it meet was, the minimum requirement wait, of 800000 Hell no. I mean, sorry. Can I say that? Yeah, you can. No. I'm teasing No, you. no. My wife, because she is a finance person. Mm-hmm. So you know what that means. Mm-hmm. I literally, so two things. She proposed in May and we got married in October. Oh, the wow. same year. Yeah. I was like, what? She, her big thing was, I am not going to... We're not going to stretch this out a whole year because I know you and I know it will, you will see more and want more. And mm-hmm. I was like, uh, okay. And so, yeah, so we got married in October. She wanted to do June, but because she's in finance, I said, okay, so if Peak we do month. it in June, this is what that means. And she was like, okay, October, that's the furthest. And so October was it. Yeah, it was, it was pretty. It was cool. It was it was great. But the thing for me was that um, I wanted to I wanted to keep it very simple. I was really nonchalant about it. The Mm -hmm. only thing that I really cared about is not having typical wedding food Mm -hmm. because I had seen it. I had it all. Mm -hmm. And my dress. Mm. I had met a dress designer early in my career, and I had always told him, like, when I get married, you're going to design my dress. And I kept to my word. Amazing. I think it's so interesting when you talk to married couples or people who are engaged, and you find out that they're polar opposites when it comes to things. So you're the creative. Yes, Big vision, beauty, and then your wife is the finance person. You got to you got to keep each other balanced. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that was that was pretty pretty interesting. So it was funny because, um, I like I said, I let go a lot of a lot of the control things I didn't really care about. She she uh, designed the cake, things mm. like that, and that was my only request that we didn't have the typical wedding food, Mm -hmm. and my dress. What kind of food did you serve? We ended up having Jamaican food. Mm. Yeah. So we we met a caterer who I still work with to this day, and they created a Jamaican-inspired wedding menu. That's amazing. And people were going back for seconds and thirds, and it was was really cool. When you think about wedding food. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. You don't always <laughs> think yum delicious. And I think it's really hard to produce and serve quality food at scale. 
Okay, I'm going to say this. Back then, that was the case. Yes, it was really hard. But now there's so many, and this goes into that one million plus budget. (laughs) There are so many uh, creative caterers now who do food that are like Michelin star restaurant quality. Mm. Like, absolutely. So I feel like it's back then when we didn't have a lot of resources yeah, it was like your basic stuff. But now it's like, oh my gosh. This you can get is, anything. You can get anything and it tastes amazing. People, when they go to weddings, yeah. I feel like they, they prep, I mean, let me just say this, not people. When I've gone to weddings, <laughs> yes. I've eaten before. Oh no. Because, you know, this is the thing. People show up to weddings <laughs> and they're long, right? And you show yes. up to the ceremony and the ceremony is about like, an hour from when it starts to when you transport and then you get to the um, cocktail hour and yes. now you're having a cocktail and maybe there's little snacks, but it's like not enough snacks, <laughs> right? And then you get to the dinner and at this point you're like shaking or you're a little tipsy because there's been an oh imbalance gosh. of alcohol and food. Yes. And then you get the portion, you eat it and then you're dancing and then you're starving. And then- <laughs> And then that's what turns, this is what's about to turn it into a million because you have your after, you have your midnight snack, Mm -hmm. you have in between the cocktail hour and all that, you have like stations and fun things and lots of food. So where we were at weddings uh, in the beginning Mm -hmm. to now, that's how we get to that one point because we are, it's It's another meal, another, another meal, another experience. Right. So, yeah. It's not, look, I've been to a lot of beautiful <laughs> weddings. I'm just saying that for me in general, you're nervous, you're excited, even as a yes, guest, yeah. right? So you- It's an early day. It's it's a long day. It so is. those little moments to, to, to nourish your guests, I think is really important. Oh yeah. Um, That's what I did at my wedding because um, to help us stay within the budget my wife gave me, mm-hmm. we, um, we did it on a weekday. Oh, and love a weekday wedding. Yes. And we were able to get the venue that we wanted. And um, because it was right after work, we, we served a um, before the ceremony appetizer. So right when they came in, we, we had appetizer about- and something to drink. And then, um, yeah. You got to keep them fed. You got to Otherwise- keep them fed. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want any hangry guests. <laughs> Or they'll be ready to leave right after dessert is served. Mm-hmm. Driving an in and out burger to pick up. <laughs> I'm so curious, since mm-hmm. running your business for so long, yes. what are some things that you wish couples who are just starting out their planning journey, like what do you wish if you had a magic wand that they would know as they start planning? What I wish that they would know is... Mm, that everything, like to stay focused on the guests that they're inviting and that those guests are there to celebrate them. Mm. All the other stuff is other stuff. Mm-hmm. Like do what's comfortable for you. Do what's comfortable for you. That's it. And I wish that they would hire, and not just because I am a wedding planner, but literally hire a wedding planner, like invest in a wedding planner that you can afford because we give you all those tips, like all of and educate you on what a real budget should be. So you can be comfortable going into the planning and have fun with it. It starts to get stressful when you don't realize and things just start to add up. That's where it gets stressful. So Uh, Having a planner, investing in a planner and having those real conversations for the area that you live in, that would be my number one thing. Planners are able to almost make up for the cost that you're paying them in education, in saving money on things that mistakes that you might make. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I, I really do believe that because oh, yeah. you, they know what you don't know. Yes. And if you're not planning for rain on your wedding day or an alternative wet, uh, if you're not planning for an alternative weather plan, 
Yes. That could literally be 50% of your budget oh, yeah. the day before oh, yeah. your wedding. And yes. that could be traumatizing for a couple. Oh, yes. The stress. Be- yes. Because I've heard so many times where a couple say, oh, yeah, we can just we can just uh, do a tent. And I'm like, OK. Do you realize how much a tent costs? Tents are so expensive. Do you realize how much like they don't want to buy they don't. an event tent <laughs> just to have it? Just because if you ever need to put one up, you're looking at minimum 20K. That's what I'm minimum for and one people, baby tent. People don't realize that. Mm-hmm. And then they they bring the the pictures, or they'll have the pictures of the beautiful tent or a clear tent or one with swag, all of that. They don't realize how much that costs to mm-hmm. just say, oh, we'll just get a tent. Like, no, you won't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think one of the things that I was personally surprised by when I was planning my engagement party was mm-hmm. the cost of putting up a tent. Yes. And it's not the actual cost of the tent because the rental company owns the tent. It is the labor that goes into setting it up. Everything down to if the ground isn't leveled, yes. they're leveling out the ground. Yes. If you're piping, you know, electric, electric, right? For lighting, that's got to be, you need an electrician there to pipe through. You also need to make sure that walkways are cleared. So it's designed in a way that's like safe. There's all of these things that go into the tent and that's for one tent. What if you're having multiple? Yes. How are they connecting? And it's also the production days that you need before Mm -hmm. and figuring out if the venue, if they have something the day before or what have you, like figuring out that whole schedule. Mm -hmm. So that's added cost to your venue. So if your venue cost is call it $20,000, but you need a full other day to set up the tents and get those- Or two days. Yes. Now you're paying an extra $40,000 just to be able to have the tent. Yes, pretty much. I mean, so we're, it's we're, like <laughs> we're adding up to the 800K <laughs> pretty quickly now. So now you're seeing how it, yes. I am, I <laughs> yes. am. What is one of your favorite things about planning weddings and events? One of my favorite things is just getting to tell the stories and getting to meet couples. Because for me, it's like, I want to make sure, and this is why my process is a little bit longer. I want to make sure that I can sit down and go to dinner with a couple and have some conversations about music, about comp- whatever, what life in general, right? If, when you do that, it makes it so much easier than just uh, connecting with folks who just want to meet like a budget range or mm-hmm. whatever. So it's about that. I feel like wedding planners are such a, a personalized thing that you have to have that connection. And that's the fun part. And when I'm able to like on wedding day, when they're getting ready to walk down the aisle, I'm like, oh, my God, there they go. That is a good you want to feel that not like, oh, my God, there they go. You know what I mean? You don't want to have that vibe. So, so that's the part I love. Let's just say that you're not a wedding factory. You're doing. A- I am so- so not a wedding factory. No. You're doing a, a handful <laughs> yes. of events a year and you know that couple intimately. And I, yes. And I reach out to them and I'm connected to them and I stay stay connected. We mm-hmm. have dinner and go out and stuff like that. So yeah, it's and I see them and as they're having kids and starting their families. So it's a emotional connection. I'm a Pisces. I'm I'm, emotions are my thing, right? And so I'm not just going to accept anyone. So yeah, that's the part I love. You, your business was featured as one of the Loverly list best of the best. Yes. You've been on a lot of lists. Yes. Y- your business since you've been around. What does it take, do you think, to operate a business that is recognized as the best of the best? The thing that you, the thing that doing a good job and just being yourself, I feel, I feel. And being better with every single wedding, taking it to the next level and not being stuck in things just looking the same. And I feel that that service and that the way you make your couples feel, all of that, those are things that I feel that make people the best. And there's a lot of folks that are out there who haven't gotten recognized. That's not saying that you're not the best, but it's just 
purely about making sure how you treat your couples Mm. and making sure that you are getting better with each wedding that you do. Mm. I know you mentioned it earlier that you kind of push yourself with each event to kind of do more, create Mm -hmm. more. I'm curious, what are things that you're excited about doing with events that you haven't done before? Mm. Do you have a bucket list of things that you want to accomplish or things that you want to design? Oh, I love that. Yes. Okay. So I really want to... I don't know why, but I want to do a wedding in Martha in Martha's Vineyards. I want to go to Martha's Vineyards and do a wedding there. That has been like one of my places that I want to go. And then also Greece. I know it's totally, completely different, but Greece and Martha's Vineyard. Mm, so those are your two destinations. Yes. And what about from a production perspective? Is there something that you've always wanted to do? I feel like so... If I could say like the last year or maybe two years ago, one of my big things used to be, I want to build a structure. I want to build, build, build. And I was able to do that and learned a lot of lessons. So that was like my only thing that I hadn't checked off. I wanted to build an actual structure. Mm. And so when I was able to do it. What did you build? I was like, oh my God. So one wedding, we did a um, a ceremony structure, Mm -hmm. a ceremony structure, and then also a tent also. So it was like, I cross those two things off. How much did that structure cost? Oh, <laughs> I'll tell you after the the camera's off. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's like a mini house. I'm imagining. No, honestly, it wasn't. Mm. But the the production of it mm. and the measurements, I didn't realize. Like you have to measure. You have to be like you said with the ground and all of that, mm-hmm. and just so particular. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. And I feel like people don't realize like, yes, you can do you can do this type of wedding. But for your planner, it's a lot of work. So that's why higher end planners charge what they charge, because it's a lot of from AMA to what I'm doing now. It's a lot of work. Mm. A lot. Anything in weddings that you think is really interesting or what I think is really interesting right now is wedding content creators. I feel like, oh my gosh, that is like, how did that even come? And, but then seeing how it's so like valuable to the couple and valuable to creatives Mm -hmm. because we've used them before where it was just like, okay, capture us behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Like that is something that I would ask a cinema artist before, but now it's like you have people who are, this is their focus. I'm like this industry, if you're creative, you can actually thrive in it, Mm -hmm. right? There is something Mm -hmm. for everyone. So that. That is a whole new thing that I think is so cool that I don't know why anybody didn't think about it before. TikTok and Instagram have changed how we're sharing weddings and presenting that information. And I could not agree more. Content creators have made it so you get a snackable view of a full day of production in 15 seconds. And people want that. People really want want to see the transformation, like of an empty space and a full production build. But then also, I think that sometimes it makes us feel like things are easier because you see it done in 15 seconds. Mm, uh, (laughs) Wait, it didn't take a whole hour. (laughs) Yeah. Didn't take four days, 15 seconds. Right, right. But yeah, I think that is the. That is so genius right now. And like I said, how creatives can use it too. Mm -hmm. I think that's. That's amazing. Shonda, I'm excited to have a follow-up post where we're breaking down these these budgets. Yes, me too. (laughs) Um, But I I love chatting with you. You have such a big heart. And I'm so excited to be able to spend this time with you in person. I am too. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing your your four weddings that you've produced this year. Thank you. I will send them your way. (laughs) Amazing. This has been the Loverly Wedding Podcast. We are hosted by Kelly Khalil, produced by Shaylin Carroll, Kayla Fitzgerald, Emily Feig, and Jennifer Alvarado. Watch the podcast on YouTube by subscribing to our channel and follow us and listen to us on Spotify, iTunes, and every major RSS feed.